can look at this a couple ways. One is what are the what are the guardrails that the creators of the AI should build into the software, right? Mm -hmm. What should these outputs look like? What should their goals be? I mean, one interesting thing about these language models is there's a type of training called reinforcement learning with human feedback, where you can basically take a model that has been trained on a bunch of data and you can give it a goal. You can literally say to the model, I want your responses to be succinct and helpful and polite and um and you know you can tell that to the model and it will try to comply and so i think those kinds of ethical guardrails at the level of the software are very important um but i think then there's another question about how institutions um and colleges and and you know workplaces and uh, every institution imaginable will need to sort of come up with their own um guardrails for the use of this technology now i i wrote a story um a few weeks ago um, that was sort of urging schools not to ban chat gpt because i don't think that's going to work first and foremost um, i just think it's you know there are now tools that say that they can detect whether some text has been auto generated or has been ai generated or not they don't work and students will always find ways around them so i think bans are just uh likely to fail um, what I do think they're going to need to do is just to be upfront with students and applicants. Um, there's a professor um, at Wharton, Ethan Mollick, who has been sort of tweeting a lot about ChatGPT in his classroom. And he has his students all use ChatGPT in the classroom and says, here are, you know, you have to tell me that you're using it. That's part of our academic integrity policy. But I expect you to use ChatGPT when you turn in an assignment. And I want to know about the way that you're prompting it. Like, what are you putting into the model to get back the answer that you're, that you're getting? And, and also, like, you need to fact check the outputs to make sure that they're true. So I think that's going to be the kind of guardrails that institutions will eventually need to put in is not saying you can't use this, but just saying, here's how you can use this. And here are the levels of disclosure that we expect from you. Yeah, I, I agree a ton. I can imagine um, what Kevin says and how that's going to happen on the college admission side. Again, no one has really had time to think about this, but like almost like a checklist of like, these are the ways in which it was used. Um, and so that we could just understand, right? Um, I think it's also just a question of, of what is the point of, a, of an essay, right? Um, some level of it is absolutely about how do you write? So the mechanics of writing um, and, you know, diction, syntax, all of those sorts of things, which chat GPT can help you with. Absolutely. But it's also about really finding that like authentic voice and thinking more deeply about what is if I could have a one sided conversation with an admissions person, what do I want to say about who I am and what makes me unique? And that that piece about the unique aspects of a person are things I haven't found chat, chat GPT to be as flexible with. Right. We put in a, our questions and it writes out something really nice, but um, it's something that's completely memorable. Like you don't rem you don't remember it in an hour. And that's not the way that you want people to think about your college essay. But there are ways that you can engage with the tool, absolutely. And it's just kind of figuring out the best case for that. See, I have a different view on this, which is I think the, the essay is done. Like I just I just think it's going it's going away. Um, because they'll all be using AI. I mean, it it will no longer be a way to gauge writing a skill because there there will be sort of a floor imposed mm -hmm. but, by but the AI. It, but was it ever? Was it ever well, really a, a right? Tool? Right. That is the the counter. I'm not sure it's a bad thing that it goes away, but I, I I can imagine like ways that this technology could actually really like improve colleges, uh, you know, ability to evaluate student work. I mean, I'm just spitballing here, but like yeah. you know, you as an admissions officer, you can't sit down and have an hour long interview with every applicant, right? It just no. doesn't. The people in your office do not scale that way. Mm -hmm. But you could have Caltech GPT. And every applicant could be required to sit down and have a one hour conversation with this chatbot that is trained to evaluate the kinds of, you know, qualities that you want your students to have. And it could synthesize that for you into a report and say, you know, this applicant one demonstrated, you know, above average skills in these areas during our chatbot interaction. I mean, you, you could really use it to effectively interview every applicant. I don't know. So yeah, and I, I want a consulting fee if you do that. 
<laughs> well, Kevin, I mean, I already have that email, something very similar to it in my inbox of people who are already developing something similar and want us to want us to try it out. Right. So I, I, I agree. You know, I think that the last the last few years have really been about um, this black box of admissions. How does it work? What is this thing? Um, and then the pandemic forced us to rethink what testing is. Chat GPT is going to make us rethink what the essay is. Um, the upcoming SCOTUS case around race and admissions is going to have us rethinking so many things. Everything is shifting and changing so rapidly in our profession um, that I think that there really is room to to make some of those adjustments. I, you know, um, it, it's interesting to be in the room and actually make some of these these decisions because the majority of students who apply to an institution like mine they're qualified, like they are qualified. Um, and so, how do you start to make some of these distinguishing? decisions about who and who should be invited in, into the class and and all of those all of those conversations I think there's so much room for us to try new things and to change new things and I don't think that I'm not afraid of chat GPT right I think we should bring technology into this and technology can absolutely help us um, but how we do it and the morality around those things is just a really important conversation right because because we're also talking about especially in my state, in California, right, the counselor to student ratio is absolutely wild, hundreds and hundreds to one counselor. And so counselors have already reached out and asked, like, can I use this to help write letters of recommendation for students? So what's the morality around a school maybe saying, no, student, you can't use it, but we encouraged your teacher to write you a letter of recommendation using this same product, right? Like that, that doesn't seem fair. So I think there's a lot of conversations and questions about the entire admissions process. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And, and, and I mean, even coming back to the essay, right? Like I have the ability to sit down with some of my students because I, I work with a smaller group of students and have a real back and forth about kind of who they are and what they want and um, their their life story and, and, and brainstorm ideas with them about, right? Like what, you know, what might you write about? If, if they could have that brainstorming session with a, a, a chat bot and it could really dig in and get to know them and um, reflect what they're talking about as a brainstorming tool. Man, what a what a great thing for equity. Right. So the question is, do you do you say that essays are no longer required or now there's an equity of every student has more access to what private school counselors can offer? Right.